Bonnie Friedman, and we're at Top This Wig Salon, and I'm, I'm really excited to talk about synthetic wigs. Right. So I'm in the demonstra demonstration process right now, so we're going to talk a little bit about them. What, what are the benefits of having a synthetic wig? Okay, the benefits are you don't have to really set them. You don't have to worry about the color fading. They go right back yeah, into the style. Primary, uh, you just put them on, and you comb them, you put them, when you take them off, you put them on a head, and the next morning you put them on. Everything's styled and ready for you. Okay. You just have to worry about heat. Heat sources, you have to be real careful on synthetic. It's a fiber. So you can't be around oven stoves, jacuzzi, sauna, cigarette lighter, barbecue pits, fireplaces, microwaves. Summertime, you go out to barbecue, you can't bend over the barbecue. Winter fireplaces, cigarettes, lighting okay. cigarettes because the smoke and the heat will go right. up. Uh, smoke, it will it frizz, it won't burn, it won't uh, set on fire, it won't melt, but it will frizz and then it's irreplaceable. Okay. The wigs are really great, they're easy to care for. You wash them, they have great memory, they go right back to where they should be. Okay. So these are better, the only uh, con is about the heat and stoves. That's the only thing. What about what about sunlight and heat? I mean, do so, they fade at all, or well, do they? If, yeah, it fades in about six, seven months because you're, if you wear it every day, you're out in the light, so you are going to fade. If you notice, if you wear wigs all the time, and you buy another one, you get the same exact color. It's going to look different I gotcha. because it's faded. Okay. So, but there should be no. It shouldn't really go straight on you. It will drop a little bit from the wear. But if you go to the right wig salon, they have a certain steamer that they can re-steam it and give it more bounce. Okay. But but don't go anywhere but a professional Only, salon yes. for that part. Because okay. where we are, we have a special steamer, like if you accidentally free, uh, frizz your bang, okay. then we have a special steamer, we can make it smooth again Okay. and take care of that. But otherwise, if it happens to you, if you can't find a place to get it done correctly, don't cut it because it doesn't grow. Now, do you have to worry? Do you have to worry about wigs that are longer, like yes. rubbing on your shoulder? Yes. Or? What I always tell the women that are going through chemo, or if not, if they want long hair, the problem with synthetic is if it rubs on your shoulder or on your back, it frays because it's fiber. And one way to help it a little bit is to take Static Guard and you spray the underneath part right here. You hold it up and you spray the underneath, mm -hmm. and you spray what you're wearing around your shoulders. Collars are really hard on even short wigs. You wear a short wig and you'll fray at the neck. It's either the collar or it can happen when you're taking chemo. The, sometimes the chemo comes out in your sweat or acid comes out in your sweat and that will fray or freeze your wig a little bit. So you okay. have to be concerned about that. Now if you do wear a long wig, you can take it and brush them, but you always have to take it and divide it, bring the back to the front, especially if you get in a car or you sit in a chair. Because if you're going to rub it that way, it's going to ruin it. Okay. So in order to keep these looking the longest time for you, would be like always pull them forward, spray static guard. Mm -hmm. And I suggest everyday wear is not going to work. If you have it to wear once a week or just to go out, then you'll be fine. But don't get a wig once you're diagnosed with cancer, long, long hair, unless you get a few. Okay. Because it will look real bad real soon. I gotcha. Okay. So what's the correct way to put on a okay. wig? Well, I'm going to show you first, when you wear even a short wig or a long wig, every time you take it off at night, at the base right here, you always brush it because it mats up like your own hair. Mm -hmm. So you brush it like this every night, and this is where you put your static guard. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the correct way to put it on because a lot of people don't know. This is the easiest way, and you're sure it's put on even. You turn around like this with a label in the back, mm -hmm. and there's two points right over here that have little wires in them, and they bend. So you take your thumb, let me have your thumb, mm -hmm. let me like go this. like this, and you're going to go, I'm going to show you real quick, like this, and okay. this way, hold it. Yeah, like this. Okay. See, feel? Yep. Okay. okay. Do the other side. Okay. Okay. Now they're bent. Okay. Now you fold it over like this. Remember the label always goes in the back, it's your first clue. Mm -hmm. And you hold it like this. Okay. You start right on your forehead. Don't worry about starting too low. We need it to grab onto something because we'll pull it up later. Okay. Start here, bring it all the way down. When you get to the back, you're going to unfold it. Okay. Okay, now unfold it. While you're back there, run your fingers across the back. Make sure it's all smooth and all the hair is not tucked underneath. Okay. 
Okay, so it's all smooth, the hair is out. Okay. Right? Now go to the front. I want you to take the base right here, and I want you to lift it up on your forehead. Okay. And I'll tell you, this is how you find out the right spot. Pull it up a little bit. Okay. okay. The correct way to make sure it's on right is always four fingers. Okay. So you go four fingers from the bridge of your nose here to your hairline, right okay. about here. Okay. This is a correct way it should be. Okay. Okay. And once you get on there like that, I want you to take your hands, feel for those two points, and make sure they're even on your temples. Okay. Because if they're uneven, you'll be walking around, it'll be sideways. Right. Okay, make sure it's even. Okay. Is it even? Yep. Make sure all the hair <laughs> is pulled out. All this hair is pulled out, like this, right? Okay. I want you to re-bend it again. I'm going to re-bend it. Let me see. You have it crooked. This is why, see how it's like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're going to take it. We're going to go like this. Yep. We're going to get it even. I'm going to re-bend it like this. Okay. I'm going to re-bend it. And we're going to take your two fingers and push it in. Just push it in like this. There you go. Okay. Okay. So now you're correct on the bottom, you're correct on the sides, and you're correct here. Okay. This is the way it should fit. Okay. Let's see. Now that I see, oh, you look good, blonde. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to show you how to comb this wig the correct way. Okay. Now a lot of people will get a bob and they just go like this. Okay. That's not good because it looks too wiggy. You don't want to have your wig short, long, it doesn't matter. You don't want it to look too perfect. Right. Because it looks like a wig. Mm -hmm. So, this is the correct way to do it. You would take the part right here, you take your brush, go right at the part, go slow because on synthetic you have to go slow. If you go quick, it flies all over. Okay. So the trick is always go slow, hold the bang area, go slow like this, and just shake your head just a little bit. Let it fall, very natural, right? And then, of course, this wig hasn't been cut and the bangs haven't been cut yet. But what you do, you have to go to a wig shop that knows what they're doing or they mm -hmm. can ruin it. Usually when I do it, I'll bring down some more bang if you want it and then I thin it. You now, can fine tune them. Can you use hairspray? Yes, you use wig hairspray. Okay. Okay, so you can leave some height like this. All right. Now. Now you were telling me that there's a special way to actually part a wig yes. so that it looks a little, you know, it hides the yeah. the seam a little bit better. Well, this one is a monofilament top that looks like it's coming out of your scalp. Okay. Which is great. They have other ones that machine wefted mm -hmm. that look not as natural. They just look like it's teased at the base. So but what do you do great. with what do you do with one that, that's a little bit that's not as nice where you have? Well, you can do either one. Let okay. me show you on this one, especially okay. on the bob. Okay, I'm so going to do a crisscross. Okay. The crisscross really makes it look natural. Okay, hold your head a little bit. I'm going to show you. You just take a wide tooth comb like this, and you take the end and you just, like you're weaving, just weave it like this. Okay, you lift it up and you just pull it apart. Okay, now look up so I can see. So it makes you know, it a little, yeah, it makes it, makes it, a it look more, more natural. natural. When you do it like this, you always have to spray it. Because okay. if you don't spray it, it's just going to divide. Okay. It's going to come apart. So you only spray this area here so it looks more natural and all this moves. Okay. Always make sure your wig moves a little bit. If you want certain areas not to move, then obviously just spray just the areas you don't want to move. Okay. You can wear these behind the ear. Now the trick, either short or long, when you go behind the ear, and most of you won't have hair, so this is really important. You just take it and you, the side view here, you go, you tuck, you really tuck a wig really good behind your ear. You have to always make like a C, okay. where you cover it like this, where you go down and then back and up. And this will cover the area. You never show the perimeter of your wig, that's the giveaway. Always make sure the perimeter in the front and the sides, wherever it is, is always covered. Okay. So you go back behind the ear like this. And then you bring this forward and you can wear it like this. So you can wear it like now this, you, you can wear it with a headband. Now you, you told me that um, not to be touching the wig yes, a lot, right? Yes, and yes. why is that? Okay, you have oils on your hair. Now a lot of times I see women, they come in and it's oily. 
And I think they left the conditioner on it, but they didn't. What they do is they're always touching their hair. They're always going like this. When you go like this, you're putting the oils from your hair from your hand on your wig. And that will make it straighter and make it oiler and it ruins it. Okay. So if you have to do it, you know, brush it a little bit like this. If you have to do it, just go like this then. Don't go like this all day because that will really destroy it. Okay. Okay, and that will straighten it out. Okay. See this is a perfect length if you want long but not too long, but short, right. but long. It's long here, it's short here, and you still have your long hair, but it's gonna last a long time. Anything that's not touching your shoulder is gonna last a long time. Anything right here, you're gonna to have to get it re-steamed or take care of it better. How do you know when it's time to get it re-steamed? Is it because You start it... frizzing. Okay. The ends start to frizz like you have um, split ends. That's what it looks like? It looks like split ends. And when that's, usually I tell my clients, in two weeks, as soon as you see a little bit, get it steamed. Don't wait till it gets too bad. Okay. And you can only steam it maybe if you ruin it, let's say you go near an oven, maybe two times, three times. You can't do it too much because the fiber will just like break off. Okay. That's not good. But if you really are good to your wigs, they'll last a long time. A wig like this and a short wig can last six to eight months. Mm -hmm.